So what's the get down? Hip hop culture lifestyle show. The mission is always to be self-empowered and self-sufficient. I always believe that the more moving parts you got in anything you do, the more chances of it not happening. Hmm. Cause you have to depend on so many different moving parts, mm -hmm. you know? And if you're gonna put a team together and you're gonna use these different moving parts, you should make sure that they're gonna put that effort and the energy that you put in it. Mm. You can't build a team if you're going 100% and they're going 30. And so, in the game, I've learned, like, stop waiting on opportunity. Some people wait for the phone to ring. Make the phone ring. I've learned, like, during some of my turbulent times, it brought about different blessings. So I'm, I'm on a record label and it's not going the right way. And one day I just decided to get equipment. I, now you gotta understand, I'm around everybody from premiere to show to large professor, I'm around some of the greatest people. And I kinda soaked in a lot of stuff I would observe from them. So when I got on a drum machine, it was like riding a bike, like I've done it before. Hmm. And you know, I'm playing this music and people are like, oh man, this is incredible, who did it? And I'm like, yo, I did it. And I'm arguing with people because they don't believe I did it. Hmm. So I thought right at that point, I have a niche. I got a, a chance at this producing thing. Hmm. I was never really starving to be in front of the camera. A lot of things is a gift and a curse. You know, some people say, out of sight, out of mind. Fucking bullshit. It's only out of sight, out of mind when you didn't make an impression. Hmm. When you making an impression, I don't care how out of sight you are. If you really touch somebody in a way, they're gonna always remember you. So I don't never worry about being in the background, worrying about I always got to be in the front, front, front. Mm -hmm. I like being in the back, in the cut. That's why I call myself, well, Fat Joe gave me the name The Underboss. Mm -hmm. And I really like that because it kind of describes me being an underground dude that I am, being a boss, but somewhat in the background mm -hmm. and learning how to mainly reprogram yourself, you know, reflect. You know, get to know who you are, get to know why you made the mistakes you made, get to know all the things that happened to you, why you make the choices you make. When we was growing up, uh, I was in the projects. I, I was raised by my grandmother. I didn't have a lot. But for some reason, growing up with my friends, we always had fun. We was always happy. So when it got to a certain point in the game, in the industry, in a rap game, I had to ask myself, when did it come to a point I needed things to be happy? Mm. And start reflecting on how simple things in the past made me happy. Why can't those simple things make me happy now? Mm -hmm. And started really reflecting on that, heavy. Mm -hmm. We're learning to be happy with simple things. Simple things is understanding what makes you happy. For a lot of people, or you know, industry people, they live for other people approval. Mm -hmm. Once you start living for other people approval, you're on this endless hamster wheel. Cause it's always gonna be somebody you can't impress. No matter how much, how successful, how everything you do is incredible, they always gonna say, well, you don't got this, or you ain't do this, or you ain't do that. Mm -hmm. 
and I learned you have to cut out all that, you know, cut out all them critics with no credentials <laughs> and live your life. Mm -hmm. Do what truly makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Your happiness shouldn't depend on the approval of other people. Mm -hmm. So when I started really simplifying my life and peace of mind is the greatest, the most valuable thing you can own. Mm -hmm. If you at peace, everything else you want to fall in place because your mind is clear, no distractions. And if you are creative, things are always here. Mm -hmm. You'll find ways to put things together and make them happen. Mm -hmm. But one, peace of mind, good health, and surrounding yourself with the right people. Not always people that, you know, people tend to get that mixed up where, you know, they feel it gotta be some other successful people you rub elbows with and then if they hook you up, then you win. Mm -hmm. No, I believe great relationships is very important, but sometimes it's people that's gonna push you to be a better person. Mm -hmm. That'll make the biggest impact in your life. It's not the, I've seen people I've seen people, and I might be a little guilty of it in my younger years, where you wish to be a part of a scene or a part of a society, right. and you're not accepted. Mm -hmm. Then I see me out there hustling, busting my ass, and they finally take notice. And you trying to get in with a crowd that wasn't fucking with you from the gate just don't make no fucking sense mm -hmm. and you see it all the time people run out there bust their ass do what they got to do to run to fuck with the same people that never want to fuck with them from the gate <laughs> you know they only fucking with you because you showed them something that they thought you wasn't capable of mm -hmm. why give them the blessing of even being around them let them keep guessing. Because now you done did something to become successful and they trying to figure out what did you do? Mm -hmm. You know, they trying to find out what your superpower was that you created that and you became successful. So I learned, you know, be self, self um, empowered. Mm -hmm. Is you it self-sufficient or self-empowered? Self-empowered and self-sufficient. Self-sufficient is when you can be able to make whatever you want happen by you. Mm -hmm. Not worrying about, damn, I need this person, I need this person, I need this person. Some of the greatest journeys in life, if you ain't ready to walk by yourself, fucking quit now. Mm -hmm. Because it's always going to be a vision or a dream that you have that other people aren't going to be able to see. Mm -hmm. Do you hold up your movement or your momentum until they understand your vision or your dream? Or do you just go out there and get the shit done? So does that make you change your thought process from like you just become a nomad and it's just strictly about where you at with it? Or because one of the things that I know when we chop it up is, is you always like, man, stop, don't make no music for yourself. No, because once you get into the business of music, mm -hmm. the business of music, All right. it's about you as a creative and as an artist, but you're selling a product now. Mm -hmm. So it can't be all about you. Are you gonna buy a million copies yourself? <laughs> <coughs> or 500,000 or 200 or whatever. It's not about you no more. It's about understanding the demographics you looking to pull in to what you trying to sell. The, 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 the demographics you trying to sell your music or your idea to. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's, it, it doesn't when it, and I had to learn that. Cause at one point I was doing music, whatever I felt. Mm -hmm. 
it's still somewhat that way, but I gotta look at who I wish to buy my music. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> who am I trying to influence? You know, because like we was just talking about the Biggie and Pac situation. I work with Biggie, one of the probably greatest artists I've ever worked with. <clears throat> Understanding of who Pac is, I met him. I was actually around them when they was first hanging out together. I was there. Mm -hmm. But when you compare the two, <clears throat> one is revolutionary, very influential. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And one they might deem as one of the greatest artists of all time. Mm -hmm. So being um, one of the greatest of all time, that is great. They're never going to forget you because you're one of the greatest. But the power of influence is a whole nother, yeah, yeah. it's a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. That means you'll have people that will fight for you long after you're gone. Mm -hmm. Calling somebody great and one of the greatest is one thing, but to have people making sure you're never forgotten and you influence them in such a way, mm -hmm. you, you might have made them a better person. It's, it's what Pac reminds me of what Rakim did when mm -hmm. Rakim first came. Rakim, the artist and his presence and him being an R and him putting people on to the to the teachings mm -hmm. to make to, to put somebody on to something that gravitates them far beyond music is one of the greatest things ever mm. because you did the music but you changed the person's life by leading by example. I mean, I remember <laughs> it ain't work. Mm -hmm. But I remember when I first came home and, you know, a lot of people around my way in the Bronx was guard bodies. So I came in one day, I remember coming to my grandmother crib, telling her, look, man, I'm not eating bacon no more. Don't, don't be cooking that. Man, she looked at me like, motherfucker, you don't buy no fucking groceries. <laughs> Who the fuck you think you are? <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> you know, at that point, grandma ruled. Right. But when I was in position myself to live that lifestyle that I wanted to live and not eat pork anymore, then that's what I did. And she seen I was serious about it. So therefore, she knew, okay, he's really focused on this. So, hey, uh, you know, I made some collard greens. But I ain't use pork, I use smoked turkey, you know? So it, it's sometimes it's leading by example and showing people that you discipline about what you mean. So like I said, what Rakim did with the teachings and not eating pork and making you wanna kinda live that lifestyle, that's, that's powerful. It is. When an artist can make you change, especially for the better. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of artists can make you change for the worse. That's right, easy. Right, right, right. Yo, I bust my gun and coke and the, that's easy. Right, right. But to be able to touch people and make them change mm -hmm. all the way around, that's when I looked at Pac like, wow. When somebody's ready to punch you in the face over somebody that ain't even here no more over some music, <laughs> That's when I kind of looked at it like, I think now it's about growth. Hmm. The way I'm gonna rhyme and what I'm standing for now, I'm a grown man now. Mm -hmm. I can't talk about young kid shit no more. I've did that already. Mm -hmm. So now I have to think so far ahead, so from a grown perspective, mm -hmm. that that's where I'm at now. It's about who do I plan to reach with this music? What purpose will this music have? Fuck rhyming over, oh, I can rhyme over some beats. Mm -hmm. That's, I've done that already. I've done show people lyrically where I'm at. Mm -hmm. 
and you can't gas me to do otherwise. People, well, you, you gotta show them you still nice. No, I don't. Fuck why? Yo, man, and you know, I look at people, if I impress you, who are you? Hmm. What does impressing you do for me? It becomes, you have to really understand yourself and understand where you going and where you plan on going. And when it comes to music and when it comes to, if I'm gonna make another record or another album, I have to top prior accomplishments. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, I've known what I've done already. Mm -hmm. Both lyrically and musically. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the top both of those. And um, rhyming on doing a feature really doesn't impress me. What does that do for me? Mm -hmm. It does more for the, the motherfucker that's getting a feature than it does for me. Indeed. Because if I ain't drop an album since 96, <laughs> if I rhyme on somebody's shit, who's it gonna help? I already got a following, I got an expectation, I got a base. Mm -hmm. So they already waiting for me, I know that. Right. So why would I expend that energy on somebody else's project? Mm. Spend it on my own project. And the thing, you gotta understand who I am and where I'm at in life. Mm -hmm. Can't offer me no fucking couple of hundred dollars. Yo, 16, I, I could give you $700, nigga, you can't give me no $700. You know, like, people crack me up. Like, you know, maybe if you do this, people will see you back and I don't need you for that. Mm -hmm. I can do that shit myself. Fuck, I look like rhyming on your record to show people I'm back. Now, if it's a big situation, I, it might be a little different depending on what the impact is going to be. Right. Like if it's, you so know, it's a, so Rock it's a, Kim or somebody or, oh. or you know, Stevie Wonder One dude, mm -hmm. Stevie Wonder One dude, that's, that's something totally different. But the rhyme with the average Joe, and I don't want to disrespect nobody. I'm not putting nobody no, down. No, I could do. But... I'm I'm just at a higher learning right now. I'm I'm somewhere totally else. And I think if well when I come back, it has to be I'm somewhere else mentally and and that's the kind of the challenge that I face because I'm older now. I don't wanna say no young shit no more. I can dig it. I, I did that. But how do I come back with the same swag, teaching some shit without being the, the oh, oh, he's trying to drop knowledge now, you know? Like, how do you do it in a way where people go, yo, mm. this dude here, that's my challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, I could do the bragging thing, but the stuff I'm thinking about right now, mm -hmm. like, the way I'm rhyming and the, the, the pattern. I mean, people got a glimpse of it in rock shit mm -hmm. where I'm not mm -hmm. after fame. I'm just trying to craft my pain with enough bars to incarcerate half the game. So when you break those bars down, I'm not after fame, just trying to craft my pain with enough bars to incarcerate half the game. Special like the date when you was born. People spend a lifetime chasing shit you can't take when you're gone. The idea that I'm spitting, the motto in the verse, you never catch a moving truck following the hearse. Like the shit where I'm at right now, I'm somewhere totally from the younger law finesse. I'm some, I'm coming from a, Whatever I do has to be a manual for the next person. If you listening to it, it has to influence you in some way where, yo, he dropping some jewels. Not only is he dropping it, but I this is some real shit and I can apply it to my life. Mm -hmm. This can 
Because if I'm not here to contribute and uplift right now at my age, mm -hmm. the fuck am I doing it for? Come on, man. Life is more than a fat ass, a cute face, and a couple of outfits. Real spit. You know, so I, I'm not chasing no women. I mean, you know, yeah, I might find that one significant one. I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm good. So where I'm at in life is more for the future versus the past. I don't really get caught up in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, people might compliment me on the past and it just seems like I'm somewhere else or I'm ungrateful. Mm -hmm. Like I'm shunning the accomplishments or shunning where I came from. Mm -hmm. It's not that. I'm just living for the future. I don't really, I call them the remember when niggas and shit. Cause that's what they always say. Yo, remember when we did this? Remember that one time? Remember when we got this? Remember, remember, remember? And it's like, they so just remembering that they sound defeated. Mm. Where their best days are behind them. Mm. And I don't want to get caught in that remembering the accomplishments of what I've done. I'm still focused. I got to keep focused forward. Mm -hmm. I can't get caught always looking back. Yeah, yo, in 1992, I did this and nah, man. And so like I said. I wanted to ask you something because I'm, I'm, I'm curious. If it's a situation where it's like, let's say DITC going to get together. Like, is that a remember when type situation? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like everybody go crazy for stuff like that. I mean, people go crazy, but it got to be real. It got to be honest. It got to be for the greater good for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's the. Can you name the members so that everybody understands who DRTC Okay, digging is. in a crate in case you don't know. It, it consists of. Showbiz, AG, Fat Joe, Diamond D, OC, Buck Wow, God bless one of the greatest, my brother Big Al, and myself. That is digging in the crates. Yes, Eight members, mm -hmm. but then you have, you always have honorary members, you know, so Brand Nubian is definitely associated with digging. Premier is by mm -hmm. far mm -hmm. the immortal hidden member <laughs> of DITC. Right. Um, who else would I... I would say Large Professors DITC. I mean, Beat Miners is DITC. Is it, it's just strictly the Bronx? No, right. definitely not, not the Bronx. So with DITC, the only way... I don't know, man, because... I've been doing so many things for so many different people that I think you lose yourself in what you want to do. Mm. And I think that that's the cause of my stagnation throughout the years is I was always willing to listen to somebody else and do what they want to do or, hey, let's try this and I would do this or I would dedicate or do things for this project. Do And I never really satisfied myself by doing what I really wanted or what I believed. Mm. So with digging, when digging gets together, if it's not for, if we ain't forming Voltron for real, right. if we ain't gonna move together and really take this shit over, I'm not doing no shit for no fucking mixtape. Or do yo, the fans might want it, we just do it for, no man. I, I have a greater, a greater purpose with music than that. Mm. Than just be rhyming on something to throw it out. I care too much about what I do and how I do it to flood the market just throwing shit out. I just value what I do too much to do that. Mm -hmm. So is that why you feel, wait, wait let's, stay, let's stay on digging for, for a second. So with the squad that, that you guys have, which is a super squad, where, you got, where do you put you guys? I mean, no disrespect to none of the other groups by far one of the greatest, if not the greatest group ever. Not just basically, you know, cause it depends on how you gonna, what you comparing us to, mm -hmm. you know? And 
My, some of the greatest groups I love, I love Wu-Tang. Mm -hmm. Love Wu-Tang, love, man. I love Wu-Tang since RZA was fucking Prince Rakim and mm. fucking Jizza was genius. Mm -hmm. You know, so my respect for them is is so great mm. is at, is at a extremely high level mm. but who digging on and what we brought to the game mm -hmm. you can't name another team like us i i would i would love for you to do it where you got producers like diamond me show and buck just those four people diamond Show me Buck. Mm -hmm. You look at the discography of all the records that we produced mm -hmm. in the game. Mm -hmm. Now, that's from a production standpoint. Now, you got OC, you got Big L, you got AG, you got Fat Joe, you got myself, you got, got Diamond. From a rap standpoint, all different styles but some of the most dangerous dudes in the game. So name another group that got that combination of producers and rappers. You can't just say, well, this group or that group. No, we got, we got different facets of what we do. Mm -hmm. So, and to this day, all the members are still, still sharp. Maybe not out there as much. And like I said, that's the gift and the curse, mm -hmm. right? Because I believe I'm a background dude. I love being in the background. Mm -hmm. I don't care to be in the front. You know, even though that's the world we live in now, mm -hmm. where you gotta constantly be in the front, or you gotta constantly tell them, yo, I was just talking to Raekwon and he might get me. And then the Griselda people, I was hollering at them like, you putting <laughs> your whole life out there to, to, to feel you gotta do that to stay relevant. Right, I can dig it, I can dig it. I don't, I don't wanna do that. Maybe that's the curse. Maybe that's not why, that, maybe that's why I'm not as far as they think I should be mm. because I choose not to do those things. I, that was never in my nature to constantly tell you what I'm up to and who I'm working with or who right, I'm trying right, to right. get with. That shit just seemed corny to me. <laughs> it just always did. And I would sit there and watch people explain their whole lifestyle or what they do. And people would eat that shit up. Yeah, we got to... Get with this person because he's doing a lot. Right. I feel like either you're gonna fuck with me or you ain't. But I'm not I'm not about to put on no fucking suit and dance like at the fucking Apollo mm -hmm. to impress some people. I'm just not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And like I said, some people say out of sight, out of mind, but at the end of the day, I'm comfortable with where I'm at and who I am. And I know. If I choose to do whatever in life, that's all on me. Mm. Doesn't have no, no bearing on what somebody else think. Mm -hmm. So like I said, it's the gift and a curse. But you it, say out of sight, out of mind, but are you really out of sight, out of, sight, out of mind? Because you got Mo, Motown state of mind. You know yeah, what I mean? Well, that's so, a project, but people want to see you on television. They want to no, agree with that. See, 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 see. Mm -hmm. They want you out there I all the time. And the minute you decide you want to be in the background, you ain't doing shit. No. <laughs> it's that simple. You yeah. ain't doing shit. You're right. You're right. And what's even worse about it is like we was talking not too long ago, is digital kind of fuck shit up. Mm-hmm. Because before, with the physical copies and things you was picking up, it showed the credits, it showed the publishing. Right. It showed different things that kept a lot of people eating from the engineers to the studios to the mastering labs. So when you go digital and it's nothing to read, how can the people out there really work and get the credit they deserve? Hmm. Like I said, unless a rapper is yelling out your name on the record. Yeah. Little finesse, that's <laughs> like, come on, man. And I don't even want you to fuck up the beginning of my record or whatever I'm doing, doing that, man. 
<laughs> that, like I said, it's me. I've always been comfortable in, in the background and I always like people to sleep on me. I, I, I love it because, you know, they sleep. They know because they kind of watch from the background and they just probably just pray you stay in the background, you know? Mm -hmm. They don't want that problem. So you don't like to talk about your history much. Um, so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna stay with certain things. You did what I'm saying? We will touch on some more stuff at, at, at later times as well. But right now, um, I want to talk about that Tommy Boy shit. Um, well, the Tommy Boy situation is this. Neil Levine signed me the penalty, mm -hmm. right? Penalty was a label owned by Neil Levine. Mm -hmm. So Penalty had me, it had Shabazz the Disciple, it had Capone and Noriega, it had another artist by the name of Blackjack, and you know, mm -hmm. Neil mm -hmm. had a, a, a mm -hmm. great a great label. He loved right. hip hop. Mm -hmm. So he got, he was a subsidiary of Warner, which was I think through Tommy Boy. All right. But I didn't sign the Tommy Boy, I signed the penalty. So, with that being said, um, they snatched the label from Neil Levine to get Capone and Noriega, I guess, on Tommy Boy. That didn't work. I had signed a fresh new deal with penalty, which I think was 250000 so I knew I wasn't going to stay on Tommy Boy. I know I never liked Tommy Boy. Mm -hmm. So my way off wasn't to tell him and I tell artists, when you want to get out of a situation, for the most part, don't let them know you want to get out of the situation. That's like the, the worst thing you can do mm -hmm. because they know you unhappy and you trying to slide. They're going to prevent that. Mm -hmm. So people don't understand if I would have told Tommy Boy, look, I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. Now, they could say, well, you're signed. You can't go nowhere. And we'll find a situation or we'll deal with that when we decide we want to deal with that. Right. So now you sitting there waiting for them to drop you. Mm -hmm. No, I'm smarter than that. I'm like, look, man, I just signed for 250. Let me get that budget. I'm ready to work. Knowing I wasn't ready to work, but I know they wasn't gonna wanna cut that motherfucking 250,000 either. <laughs> so it's like, hey man, we, we wanna think if we gonna move together on this, this is your next album. And mm. I'm like, well, let me know. I just, shit, Neil cut me this deal already. I done signed the paperwork. I need that 250. Mm -hmm. Well, we gonna let you go. All right, well, let me get the release forms. What we, we waiting on? Mm -hmm. But if I would have told them I wanted to leave, yeah, then I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. Because now they're going to say, you signed. And now they kind of put you in freeze. They, they freeze you, throw mm -hmm. you in the freezer, put mm -hmm. you in storage. Mm -hmm. So my situation, I was able to get off. Now, during the case of that, I recouped. I ain't owe Neil and them nothing because that first album, I ain't really get a budget. So. I recoup the money back, boom. So now we come up to today's day and time. What they was trying to do, Neil, I mean, uh, Tom Silverman, mm -hmm. he was trying to get me to, um, he was trying to get me to sign a declaration. Mm -hmm. A declaration which really was protecting them from my original contract ain't have digital in it. Mm -hmm. So when you look at Spotify and when you look at all these things, that wasn't included in the deal. Mm -hmm. So trying to protect themselves, it was this declaration that included a lot of other shit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, nah, man, well, you know, your royalties, we could give you more, we give you 30%, but nah, I'm good with whatever y'all owe me, let's just stick to that. Mm -hmm. You know, and plus my lawyer was like, man, you be a fool to sign that declaration where it has so much things in the declaration. Mm -hmm. 
And so I'm recouped. I've been getting my royalties until as of recent. Mm. My statement came in and all of a sudden it says I'm owing 2,900. They decide they want to remaster the awakening. Mm. That is no cost of mine. Mm. I didn't tell y'all to reissue it or remaster it. Y'all chose to do that on your own and you charging it to me by keeping my royalties that's coming in saying I owe that to y'all. That's some mm -hmm. real shisty shit. Yeah, that's gangsta shit. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't doubt that that's what they do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm going to speak out against it because I think that shit is, is foul. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of artists need to watch when labels are reissuing your project because why are they charging it to you if you already recoup? If I have, if you loan me money, let's say you a fucking loan shark. Mm -hmm. You loan me money and um, I pay you back the money you know, paying back a loan shark is a motherfucker, you know, you pay back the loan shark and a loan shark decide to buy some other shit for you mm -hmm. and tell you you owe them. You looking at the loan shark like, nigga, I ain't tell you that. I paid you your shit back. I ain't need you to buy me nothing else. Mm -hmm. You ain't hear me say buy me something else. It's mm -hmm. the same shit with a fucking label. Yeah. You know, so... That's where I'm at with Tommy Boy right now. I'm an artist, I'm a producer, I'm a DJ. When I choose to do one or two out the three, mm -hmm. something's gonna suffer. Mm -hmm. So in this case with me DJing and producing, rapping is suffering. Mm -hmm. Rapping is suffering because, like I said before, for me to do something, another album, deep thought goes into it. It's not one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Like production and DJ is one, two, three. I can make shit happen, throw something out, boom. And you write at it. I don't write as fast no more. Just because my mindset is like, okay, what do I think is yeah. prolific or, or important enough for me to write about? Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that takes time, but life goes on. I have to find other things that's going to take up that time that that's, that's going to come out. Mm -hmm. So the rap thing is something I still want to do, mm -hmm. but other things is just taking precedence over that. I got you. I got you. You know, people, yo, man, people want to hear you rhyme. People want, yo, and I, and I get it. But one thing I learned with the awakening, when I had the awakening going mm -hmm. and I was putting my all into it, people ain't even understand that album. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's melodic. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Because, you know, they had so many other things to compare it to. You know, the right, bad boys, right, right. death row, so much shit was going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So people didn't focus on that album. Now, you know, 15, 20 something years later, that was a classic. Oh my gosh! And it's like, <laughs> come on, man. You think an artist want to paint a picture and wait 15, 20 years before somebody <laughs> understand what they was thinking about when they was doing it? So my whole thing, I tell people in a minute, like, look, when I do this next album, I don't need y'all motherfuckers waiting 15, 20 years to understand what I'm doing. Right. Appreciate it, live in the moment. And that's, nowadays, it's hard to live in a moment. Got all the cameras and technology. Yeah. Yeah. So they go to a show, they, they want to film it, everything they want to film. Or they want to say, hey man, you did the, the DJ set, could you post it? It's like, man, motherfucker, live in the moment, man. Because it, it just seems disrespectful in a way, it's like, if I posted all the DJ sets, then you probably wouldn't even tune in when I'm doing it. Word. You wouldn't appreciate it. Oh, I'll catch that shit later. He gonna post it anyway. Mm -hmm. But look at the time that I'm taking out to put these sets together and do what I'm doing. Right. The least you can do is give me that attention. 
for the time that I'm doing it. Not waiting until I post it. Now, if you want to go back and check it again, that's something totally different. Mm -hmm. But to, um, yeah, I'll wait till he posts it. Mm -hmm. uh, don't worry, it'll be up in about like an hour or so. Mm -hmm. Like we in that, that unappreciative era right now. Mm -hmm where they, they don't appreciate shit till they, they don't get it. And when they don't get it, then it's like, yo, man, it's the same thing. Some of your your, your best artists out there, y'all don't support to the fullest. Mm -hmm. And yo, man, why they, why they don't do music no more? Y'all motherfuckers ain't supporting. If they were supporting, then motherfuckers would keep doing the music. But when they ain't getting that support, then it's like, they have to find out and prioritize what they have to think and find out what's more important in life and prioritize those other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They they living. They got might have a family, might have a tribe, you know, they got kids, you know. So whatever they doing should be supported. Right. And this digital shit ain't helping much. Mm -mm. You gotta understand, this digital shit is a whole nother level. When I signed my deal with all my record labels, it was three platforms. It was CD, cassette, and vinyl. Three platforms. Mm -hmm. Within those three platforms, you knew what the CD was going for, what the cassette was going for, and what the vinyl was going for. Your lawyer came in and negotiated the number on all three of those things. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, you know, for each cassette, CD, or vinyl you sold, you know exactly what you was getting. Mm -hmm. Then came internet, YouTube, iTunes, fucking Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, Apple Music. All these platforms I'm talking about were never negotiated. So with them not being negotiated, fucking labels are giving you what they think you should get mm -hmm. or what they feel you should get. Mm -hmm. Your lawyer would have never negotiated like that. Your lawyer wouldn't let that go down. So how is this digital shit even legal what they doing? Mm -hmm. How can your fucking lawyer negotiate platforms that fucking didn't exist? That's real though. Yeah, it's real. Yo, man, streaming is paying. Imagine if they was paying you what you should get, what you would get. Hmm. So when I look at certain things, it's, it's baffling to me, man. I sit here fucking totally baffled at the situation that with all the streaming and digital shit that artists are getting fucking fractions of a penny for each stream. Yeah. Your lawyer wouldn't agree to that. And if your lawyer wouldn't agree to that, these platforms wouldn't have existed. Because mm -hmm. your lawyer would have said, nah, we ain't doing that deal. And if all the lawyers did that for all they artists, <laughs> then these platforms, you have no music for these platforms to exist. But they did it the slick route. Mm -hmm. The label and these uh, streaming services, they did a deal. They came, took the shit to the government, and came with how they gonna work out a deal amongst them and, and fucked over the artists. Yep. So when I hear people yelling about, yeah, streaming, you get money for streaming. It's like, man. It's funny because the DOJ was was uh, looking into BMI and ASCAP. But yeah. they just dropped it. They just dropped it. They just it. dropped it. Yeah, they just dropped it. So Nothing got changed or none of that. These streaming things don't even exists without the artists and the music. <coughs> How right. can you fuck over the artists and the music? I mean, everything that I, I've been as an artist underground, why is I fought for? Right. People might not even understand the, the magnitude of what I fought for. Mm -hmm. They listen to what's being put out there and they don't even see if it's, it's true or facts, you right. know? Right. I fight for my music because anything I know is a grind. You know, like people taking your music and doing what they want with it. That's another thing people don't understand. So people didn't understand 
things in general about the, the mixtape situation. Mm -hmm. You know, if an artist takes your music and does a song with your music and he's promoting himself, mm -hmm. you know, people think that's, if, if they do it and don't get no money for it, it's free. Mm -hmm. The artist could be using your, your, your music to sell merch. He can do use your music to hit other platforms without even selling your music, but using your music to do it. Mm. You know, and, and so many levels, like, I've been there before. I've been there before and I've, I've proven my case to the fact where things settle out and they hide the evidence. Nah, so they tell you that he's bitter, he's mad, but then when the facts come out and the case is cleared, the evidence is suppressed. <laughs> yeah. So why would you hide the evidence if you, you didn't do nothing wrong? I wouldn't tell you to hide the evidence. I'm proving I had to use the evidence to show y'all that I fought for what was right and I proved my point mm -hmm. but you you hide the evidence and then people say you know because people don't look people no. don't say well the evidence is suppressed what happened mm -hmm. you know so i've been through things through lawsuits and different things and i just fight for what i believe in which is my art which is my blood sweat and tears that i put in through the years mm -hmm. and nobody's gonna fight for you like you're gonna fight for yourself and that's just it you know, to 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 hear that, you know what I mean. It it it, uh, it makes a lot of sense because when when I think about some of the things that you do, like engineering and all of that, that's why I said we have to break this up into different settings. Because your DJing, we really gonna get into that mm -hmm. uh, at another time, and I want to get into your engineering because that one right there is the one that is most. Oh, engineering! Now. I have engineers. It's just that I'm the I'm the voice behind the engineer. Wow. So when I do my music and I'm producing, mm -hmm. I know what this shit should sound like. I got you. And I'm gonna be on top of the engineer for every little sound of that. Cause I'm at this point in my life and in my career, um, I've learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And my music has to reflect that. Mm. So I'm 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 deep when I'm very passionate on music. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm, I'm I'm I got to do this one for the West Wing cabinet. Is Melba ever gonna get them push-ups? Oh man, maybe in my next lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> Melba Moore be trying to get me to do a hundred push-ups on my live. Look, I'm walking two miles and, and things of that nature, you know. But I love Melba. I mean, just to have an iconic person pop up on my live. Mm -hmm. And she's done so much for music. Mm -hmm. You know, she's one of the trailblazers that, that's accomplished things way before I even heard what music was. Right. right. So, you know, I appreciate all the... Uh, Trailblazers that did it before me, whether they 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 are uh, rhythm and blues artists, mm -hmm. you know, from Stevie Wonder to James Brown to Michael Jackson to fucking Barry White to all these incredible artists, man. I'm 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 definitely in. I'm honored to to, to be a part of that era to hear those yeah. that music. And just like the, the artists before me, whether it was, you know, the Cold Crush, or Grandmaster Flash, the Furious Five, Dougie Fresh, Slick Rick, you know, I know my origin, Kane, Rakim, G-Rap, Karis One, Ice Cube, fucking Ghetto Boys, the list goes on and on. Yeah, George. Yeah. That these people played a part in the growth of who I am as an artist. Right, right, right. You know, yeah. like, a lot of artists don't understand that, um, you know, the artists before you definitely paved the good path that you could walk through. Mm -hmm. 
you know, they definitely put bricks in the bridge that you walk across. Mm -hmm. So we in this ha what have you done lately stage. Got you. Motherfucker, my bricks is in the bridge already. What you want me to put new bricks in the bridge now? I can you dig. know? I can dig. They it's already cemented what I did in the game. <laughs> so I look at music like we could talk about music on so many different platform so mm. many different ways mm. i'm on that brainwash for roll out anonymous underplay the overplay strategic i promise mo dope brings mo negroes watch them heroes pro lethal dream killers feast on people newbie is indeed mine on the hunt paul bear sharp through with gates and piston bumps no excuses that's a sin back to the begin muscle memory pseudo respect and revenge plays blindfolded a bucket list with interest forgiveness to shadows and mirrors who handle business legacy all grown no guest list Land in jurisdiction Make your bread prejudice For the purists and the tourists Cue sticky for ghetto jurors Swing high, swing low You forgot that we do this Bank selection, smooth DR5 Underground icon You have now been gentrified